Hello. Welcome back to my channel. This example problem shows how to use the method of sections to determine the internal axial force in a composite axial member like this one up here. Before we get into the nitty gritty of this problem, I did model this for you in CAD. It looks something like this in 3D. Maybe some type of cylindrical piece of aluminum maybe. Maybe it's welded to these rigid plates that are labeled A, B, C, and D. We have a few forces input into the system. You can see those with the vectors. Some are pushing to the left or negative x direction. Some are pushing to the right. And when we go back to the 2D image, we'll see that plane A is fixed. And that means it is prevented from moving. All of these other um, planes and pieces of solid material, they're going to actually move around in space as a result of these applied forces. Um, but before we can start to quantify that, first we just need to determine what is the internal force in the solid material between rigid plates C and D. Similarly, what is the internal force in this aluminum material between B and C, and so on and so forth? What's the internal force over between A and B? That is the premise behind this problem. All right, the problem statement tells us that member ABCD is fixed at A. That's what this symbol means. It means translation and rotation are prohibited, so it is fixed. Therefore, it can develop transla uh, translation reactions with respect to X and Y, as well as rotation reactions. Six forces have been applied to the member at the rigid plates. So symmetric top bottom, top bottom, and top bottom. And I think it's important to really make sure you understand in 3D what's going on. So we're just looking at a side view, something like this of this structure. And everything is nice and symmetric. So we're not causing any type of bending. We're not causing any type of twisting or shearing or anything like that. We're just loading this in good old axial tension and compression. And I think this problem, you know, we draw it to the side mostly because it fits on the paper really well this way. But you could imagine this in kind of the natural environment. Like this could be, you could be modeling, I guess, sort of a tree, right? So this could be the trunk of a tree. This could be the weight of some branches coming down, weight of some branches coming down. You'd have to get creative with that analogy to, you know, to figure out what's happening at C here. Um, but that fixed plane at A, I think once we kind of impose gravity by just rotating the view, um, the problem may make a little more sense intuitively um, to look at it that way versus kind of looking at it on its side here. All right, so we've got these rigid plates. We have defined plane EE as halfway between A and B, okay? FF is halfway between B and C. And plane GG is halfway between C and D. Okay, what we would like to do is find or solve the internal force that lies in planes E, F, F, and G, G. That's what we want to do. And that internal force, it goes by a couple names. So we could call that an axial force because all of these forces in the system, all of the forces in the system are aligned to the axis of the member right there. Another thing we could do is call it a normal force clean this up a little bit real quick. Okay, We could also call this a normal force. 
And that symbol that we use for normal force is a capital N and is just defined as a force that is perpendicular or normal to a plane. And specifically, it's the plane of the cross section. So cut through EE, what does it look like in cross section? Well, it's some type of a cylinder. We don't know from the CAD model whether it's a hollow cylinder like that, or maybe it's just a solid cylinder, some type of cylinder we can see from the CAD model. Right, that's what we're trying to do on this problem. I'm gonna kind of work my way from right to left, and here's why. I'm gonna take this loading diagram. And I know that I do have the potential to develop a reaction at A. So if I were to take any free bodies that included A, I would have to know what that reaction is. So I am going to do something else. Specifically, I'm going to take this free body right here. Okay. So what I've done is I've made a theoretical cutting plane. I have cut through GG. This is a method of sections type of maneuver. And now I want to figure out what is happening at plane GG so that this little free body is in static equilibrium. All right, there's two ways to do this. And I'll do this both ways. In fact, because I'm going to do it both ways, I'm going to make a second identical free body here. And we're just going to do this two ways, OK? So this, the first way is like the most mathematically pure way. And I think while you're learning this, this is probably the best way to do this. OK, so this will be our first way. And then down below, I'll show you kind of the seasoned veteran way to do this. Um, we'll skip some steps. But while you're learning it, probably good to kind of write it out mathematically. So what we want to do is draw a vector in the positive direction. And we remember our sign convention that for internal normal force, a positive force vector is one that points away from the free body. OK, so this is different than the sign convention you've been using in many classes that just says, hey, if a vector is pointing in the positive x direction, I'm going to call it positive. No, this is different. So this is a positive internal force because the arrow is pointing away from the body in our free body diagram. OK, so step one, draw um, normal force in the positive direction. Step two, we want to do our equations of equilibrium. And the only equation of equilibrium that is any good to us on this problem is the summation of the forces in the x direction equals 0 using this Cartesian coordinate system, a 2D plane, x, y, as shown there. OK, now we can go on autopilot. So we know from statics, first of all, how many forces are we going to have in our system? We have one. I'm going to use yellow for this. OK, I want to use one, two, three. We'll have three forces in this equilibrium equation. And now to use the equations of equilibrium, now we're back to that older sign convention where any vector that points left to right in the positive x direction will define that as positive. Okay, so we've got two different sign conventions in play. You have to master the sign convention for internal normal force and once you're doing equations of equilibrium, you go back to what you learned in physics and in statics, a vector pointing in the positive x direction gets a positive x sign. OK, let's write out those three terms. First term in which direction? Minus x minus sign. Next term, three kips. Which direction? Pointing to the left, minus sign. One more term, three kips. What direction? Pointing to the left, minus sign. Set that all equal to zero and combine and simplify, solve for n. And what we will see is that n is equal to a negative, follow those signs carefully, n is equal to a negative six 
KIPPS. Now, because signs are so confusing in this class, and because it is such a spatial class, another way to write this is to say that that six KIPP internal force at plane GG is a compressive force. So I like to put the little C in parentheses. What that means is compression. Wrong tool. Give me a second to fix that. There we go. Compression. Okay. That's also what this minus sign means. It also signifies compression. Either one of these answers is correct. I prefer this one because I find it to be less ambiguous. All right, that is kind of the mathematically formal way to solve this. Here is what a seasoned pro would do. They would look at this picture and say, okay, by inspection, I need a force to put this in equilibrium. And I've got six kips going from right to left. Well, therefore, I need six kips going from left to right. That is my internal normal force. Since my arrowhead is pointed at the free body, you would report the answer the same way. So you would either say the internal normal force equals a minus six kips. Okay. And again, watch these sign conventions because I know that's going from left to right. And you're like, okay, this has always been positive up until now, but it is an internal force. So we need to memorize and execute that sign convention. And because the sign conventions are tricky, my preference would be six kips of compression. Same answer that we got just above. If you want to distinguish these answers from what we're about to do, which is also look at these two other planes, this one and this one, if you want to distinguish your answers, you can give this some ornamentation in the form of subscripts. So we could just put a G, G down here that says that the normal force that lies in plane G, G is six skips of compression. All right, so that's our basic way to approach this. Um, I'll do the two other co cuts and solve this for you, but I will pick up the pace quite a bit. All right, I'm going to turn off this layer and that layer. Add a new layer on top. Come and get my selection tool. And now I want to cut through plane FF so that I can expose the internal force that lies in that plane. So again, I do an edit, copy merged, and edit a paste. And I'll paste this twice, just like I did a minute ago, to kind of show you the longer mathematically pure way that while you're learning, that's probably how you should do it, and then kind of the faster seasoned veteran way. Okay. Method one, mathematically pure. Here is our unknown normal force at plane in, I'm sorry, plane FF. Summation of forces in the x direction equals zero. Left to right is positive. How many terms am I going to have in this one? One, two, three, four, five. But I'm just going to turn these into a 10 kip equivalent vector. I'm going to turn these into a 6 kip equivalent vector. And by doing that, I'll just have three terms. Let's write them out. N sub FF, that is a positive internal normal force. But since I am doing an equation of equilibrium, I'm looking at this sign convention. It's pointing to the left or the negative x direction. Give that one a negative sign. Next term, the two five kips. Those are 10 kips total. They're left to right. That is positive. Last term, three kips plus three kips. That is six kips total. Pointing to the left, that is negative. Set that equal to zero. 10 minus six is four. Put to the other side, minus four divided by negative, And we get a result of the normal force 
at plane f f as a positive four kips. That also can be expressed as four kips of tension. That is the best way to express that answer. All right, here's the fast way. You cut the free body and you ask yourself, what do I need at FF to keep this in equilibrium? And so you think, okay, I got 10 kips to the right. I've got six kips to the left. I need four more kips to the left for equilibrium. So for equilibrium, I need a left, I need a vector pointing to the left or in the negative x direction, magnitude four kips. And then to report that answer, we note that the arrow points away from the body. Therefore, that is tension or positive. Report that as positive four kips or four kips of tension like that. I'll go ahead and do the final cut. Boop, boop, boop. New layer, close that. All right, let's see what's going on at plane EE. We can again use the method of sections. Grab my lasso, lasso tool, lasso, lasso. Okay, grab that much of the free body, edit. Copy merged, edit, paste. We'll do it both ways. Now I'll just do it the math. I'll just do this one, last one just the one way, okay? All right, so here's our question. What is, what is the normal force at plane E? Okay, let's draw it in the positive direction, arrow pointed away from the free body, summation of forces x direction equals zero. How many terms? I'm going to double these up again, so I'll do one, two, three, and four. First term. Actually, let me show you a different way to do this, actually. Okay, so if you don't want to worry about your signs, there's another way to think through this, and it is that this one, this one, and that one, those are all pointing in the same direction. So I'm going to put them to the left side of the equal sign. This one is in the opposite direction, so I'll put it to the right side of the equal sign. And this, this usually saves a step. It's like one fewer piece of algebra that you have to do. So I'm going to put on the left side of the equation everything pointing to the left. So that's my normal force. That is my six kips. I'm sorry, 16 twice eight plus my six kips twice three equals 10 kips twice five on the uh, left side of the equation we can add these together and deduct this from here and mathematically we will conclude that the normal force in or at plane ee is a minus 12 kips is a minus 12 kips what does that mean well we drew it in the positive direction by default the minus sign says that, nope, you don't have tension, you have compression. So the best way to express that is to leave it as a negative sign there and then kind of put an exclamation point on your understanding of the sign convention by writing 12 kips of compression. Please note, please, please, please note that I am not doing a double negative, right? If I were to come in here and do minus 12 kips of compression, that is incredibly ambiguous. Your audience will not know, are you reinforcing the fact that there's compression or is it actually tension, which is the opposite of compression? So the way that we communicate this is option one, use the sign. Option two, use the compression or tension indicators in parentheses. Last little tidbit before we finish this out. The reason why, the reason why we did not have to calculate the reaction at A, there's some unknown reaction here, 
we did not need to calculate that because none of our free bodies included that plane. All of our free bodies, we cut through this plane and then we took the right side or we cut through this plane and took the right side or this plane and took the right side. Okay, we never had to calculate that. So that is a good strategy for these type of problems. Make your cuts so you don't have to solve for reactions that are not mission critical. That's the end of this video.